Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the iRacing Virtual Cup Series qualifying race. This is race number two of the season here at Kansas Speedway. Currently have a little bit less than half an hour in practice left. A 72 degree air temp. Uh, wind direction is north at six miles an hour. It's going to be overclass, overcast. Clouds are going to stay out for majority of this race, most likely. Should keep the track cooled down for these guys and, and should allow for some pretty good racing. Set left. So 100 laps. A fuel run is anywhere from 30 to 35 laps. So it'll be interesting to see how these guys decide to divide it up. But the field comes through turn number three, turn number four. Daniel Bowdler in the number six car is going to lead the field to the green. The pace car is going to take the dive to pit road. Daniel Bowdler is going to get the field going as the green flag is out here at Kansas. The six car gets a great start there. He just boosted right out of the gate, pulling away. P2 is 37. Now it's the nine. Oh no, it's nine. Yeah, sorry about that. Looks like the nine is the field. You see all the different exit points that this field it takes off of the corner. And look at this as they are just absolutely stacked up down here into turn three. The 15, the 48, 43, the 28, and the five. And then we got a little bit of side-by-side -side action just ahead of those guys. That's Robert Montgomery on the outside of the 12 car of Justin Belmont. And Looks he, like we got a battle for the lead between the 6 and the 9. And they keep going back and forth here. The 6 has a run, but the 9 has the bottom. Who's going to prevail? And I think as long as that 6 can keep him squeezed down there, he, he can force the 9. We got a wreck. We got a wreck in turn 4. Two cars involved. Yellow flag is not out as they keep going. No caution, the 36, the 27. Ouch. Right it's, like, it's like just everybody jostling for position. And uh, Dennis, you can keep us updated on what's happening at the front of the field right now as we go back and watch this replay as we're still under green at the moment. It's like the 27 got a big drive underneath the four. And they go off into three, and yeah, just looks like they get loose, and they were four wide for a moment, and just stack them up, absolutely. That is tough. At least sixth, seventh, eighth, all under a blanket here. Got side-by-side -side battles just about everywhere here, and looks like the 52 is going to just slide right up in front of the 12. 12 is going to try and do a cross over here. He's not going to have enough momentum. But that's going to allow the 15, the 4, and the 44 to as well close in. As it's the like 15, the 15 got up in the wall a little bit there. Wall. Yep. Let's go on board with that number 15 car. See what he sees from this gyro cam. Is you see how early he lifts. And it looks, you see how tight that car is just pushing up. And, uh, I mean, it, it is so tough. But then you see the big run that he's able to get off of the corner. He's going to close the gap. Be three wide ahead. The 52, the 44, and the Oh, fifth, contact. The contact. It looks like everybody's going to gather it back up here. And here you see him pushing up the track. This was the replay of that incident earlier. Um, we try to watch it here from his onboard, but... You see how tight this is Robert Montgomery's onboard camera. He's going to get somebody up to his outside. I think it's going to be that 12 car. You see he sets up the crossover and he's got to get to the bottom and get it to stick. But he had somebody on his inside and you just see how hard that car just pushes up the track. And um, luckily, no, no worse for wear for the most part. Absolutely is looking through the field at some of these battles. That's Thomas Rutherford in the four. And then, oh, the 24 gets make, he gets tight and makes contact with the 44, and they save it. My goodness, what a save by Tanner Kalen. And the 24 machine, they made heavy, heavy contact for that portion of the racetrack. As you see, people really 
starting to get tight, starting to, to push tight, and um, it gets difficult as the run goes on. You'll have to forgive me, I believe that is Daniel Dow. He is actually the 21 car showing a number 24 scheme. Um, but Do you think the 44 was waving to the crowd in the infield? <laughs> I imagine he got a good glance of him for a minute, but I don't know if he was focused on, on the crowd down there. 75 is going to get a better run on the bottom lane. He's going to clear the six coming off of turn number four, and he's going to set sail and set those eyes on. The number nine has pit. Control. The number nine has pit. And we're going to start seeing the first round of pit stops as the nine. And being the leader and being the maybe not the first car to come down pit road, it looks like we've got a, a few guys who came down maybe a lap or two before him. But being that he's... Yeah, just being that he's one of the earliest guys to come down pit road with the huge lead he already had, uh, I think that's just going to benefit him. I think when you get that far behind somebody, you've got to do something to make up time, and typically in a short pit is, is the best way to do that and come out and, and you're going to be on fresher tires and be faster than him. Um, but I don't know. I think they're stretching. I think anybody who's waiting, oh, man, you see a, a big mess trying to get down here on a pit road. It looks like the five-man walked his tires up. You got the 48, the 51, the 5, the 44 all coming on pit road at the exact same time. Um, it looks like Jeremy Morrison is, is, is electing to stay out, and he's losing time to all these guys who are on fresh tires. However, if it becomes tight on fuel, obviously Jeffrey Morrison would be in the best seat as he looks like he's going to go ahead and come on down pit road for service. And you see Jacob Culp was one of the fastest on pit road 4.92 um, but he was he was the one of the fastest in his uh just as his coming down pit road as he uh he, his pit lane time was 41.4 seconds only one driver was faster than that and that was brian conklin at 41 even so um obviously when you make green flag pit stops you've got to be uh, you got to be smooth and you can't make any mistakes and it seems like uh, Jacob Colt did just that back to the pack you have the 75 and the 37 going at it right now swapping positions back and forth crossing each other over certainly it's 75 is on newer tires as he's just come out of pit road and I'm sure he's wanting to make quick work of this so he can go back up there and catch that loud group he sees in front of him yeah, and, and I said I thought that Jacob Colt may have doubled his lead just by pitting as early as he did. And look at the interval. 11.5 second gap now back to the number six car. If I was anybody that's not named Jacob Colt driving, driving a number nine car right now, I do not like my chances unless I get a yellow flag. Extra ground. But if you're just now tuning in, if you're just now joining us here for the iRacing Virtual Cup Series Qualifier, we are through 50 laps out of the scheduled 100. And uh, so far, we have only had one caution early on. No, I'm sorry, I did not bring up a caution. We've had no cautions. We did have an incident early on that put some guys in the wall, but no caution was brought out. Um, and the iRacing Virtual Cup Qualifier brought to you by Premier Private Car Service check those guys out on Facebook go to their website premierprivatecar.com for the best premier private car shuttle service in the Washington DC Baltimore Maryland area I just I just really like the the strategies that we're seeing here people staying out people pitting early like right now you got the 28 car coming down pit road uh, and the top five are still are still going at it, man. On, on older tires, maybe we'll see him come down this time. Yep, looks like the leader, the 48 car of Tyler Marble, will drop down to pit road for some fresh good years and fuel. Yep. Be interested to see how long the 75 is willing to stay out. I, I just, I wonder, the last pit stop for the number nine car uh, let's see. Let me see if I can, if I have this information. Yeah, if the 78.5 stays out long enough, he might have the advantage by uh, having more speed. But, uh, man, that <clears throat> the interval is way too great to make up. 
Well, not just uh, that. We're coming to 33 laps to go here. I mean, he's counting laps now. Well, look, the the 75 has been out on track for 33 laps now. So we we just can't we just hit 33 laps to go. You know, we know the fuel window is between 30 and 35 laps. So I wonder if maybe that 75 is banking on these leaders being just a, a tad bit short and he's staying out trying to to, to gain the, yep, the time he he's coming down but we yep. know that he can go 33 laps on a tank of fuel he just yep. did it that time so I wonder oh, if slow her down who he locked her up and I wonder if he's gonna get caught speeding it does not appear so um, I sure hope not that was a that, this, is, this is a good opportunity for the guy to try to get up in there and at least get a top five out of the deal and just to just to look at it so jacob colt last pitted on lap 60 his first pit stop was on lap 30 so i don't know if he can go 40 laps on a tank of fuel um, but i do know that jeremy morrison can go 33 because he just did it. So the only person that we know is good on fuel is going to be Jeremy Morrison. Now, here's the question, though, is, and this would be absolutely crazy, and it would really put into perspective how big of a lead Jacob Culp has been able to, to develop through all these pit cycles, is if he has to pit again, along with everybody else, could he still maintain that lead over Jeremy Morrison? I don't know. I don't know if he's going to have that big of a lead. Because it doesn't seem like he gapped Daniel Bowdler all that much. As he's only up to a 15.56 second lead over P2 now. Yeah, 44 is going to take a look to the inside here. Going into one. That 21, even though he's a lap down, he could be an issue here. He's going to get into the inside of the 44. And that's going to make it three wide for a second. 44 is going to drift up a little bit. And, that's, and he's going to lose all the time he just gained on that six car. It's either catching another slower car. He's going to get down on the apron here. 44 is using that high side to try and get a run. They're both going to use that apron. However, the 44 is going to get a better run here going into turn number one. And they're going to be side by side again. Six higher than 44. The 44 using that lower line. He's going to slide up in front of that six. And just shut the door on that six car. And here comes that run. the six car, he's trying to do the crossover again going into turns three and four gonna be dead even in that 44 this time he's six oh, trying to slide up oh that's gonna get almost tight got into him oh man that could have changed 44 the race is gonna prevail on that top side though what great race though what 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 an impressive start to this season man last week with one yellow this week we're we're still yellow free uh great racing like we're just seeing right here i mean you got the 44 and the, and the six really going at it right now trying trying to get their fit best finish position Back through the pack, we have a battle for six between three different cars, the 51, 15, and 37. The 51 just got underneath the 15 past him. 37's trying to get underneath. The 15's trying to defend him off. He's trying to go back up to the front. I mean, these guys are top runners, man. They're, they're all trying to get back to, you know, the top three, but yet they're still running sixth, seventh, and eighth. So uh, this is definitely a top-notch field tonight. Yeah, you can see that 37 and 50 run running that lower line while that 15 is running a little bit higher. And like we said earlier, some of these cars are probably pushing and they're not able to run that higher line like they were earlier in the run or earlier in the race as well. So that's probably becoming a disadvantage, that high line is for some of these cars. Yeah, it's incredible to see that, man, because like I said earlier, usually... That top line, man, that's the preferred line around here at Kansas Speedway. But with something about this uh, this package on the cup cars really really brings out the bottom line. And that 44 has just hit pit road, and he's going to be coming off right by here. So this is this is what I'm talking about. The the 44 realized that he was not good to make it. And and so he short pitted, and I like the call. He splits this last little third and half. Um, but man, I just I cannot imagine that the 75 is not in the catbird seat right now because he's good till the end. We know he's good till the end. 
but we don't know that anybody else is good to the end. Up oh, here comes the nine down pit road as he's oh, man. taking. Man, it, this has changed, bro. This Jeremy guy. Morrison, he's going to win tonight because of that strategy call, I guarantee it. Unless the yellow does come out, like I said, that will change everything. I wonder if the nine might gas and go here. I know you need the tires, you want the tires, but you don't want to lose the, you know, the, the extra... 21 second lead he has yeah i mean you, you i think you should be able to get out in front but he'll, he i don't know i'd rather have tires man yeah, i don't know i mean right side's on his car here and they're not jack up oh, they're jack the plus side, side here yep there they are four, four tires. tires fuel it looks like uh a lot of different strategies are ended up playing out for everybody and uh Looks like we're coming to 13 to, or 12 to go. 13 to go, 14 to go. There's yeah, a possibility the 51 might be good to the end, but the thing is, the 51's got to catch him, and he's five seconds back. And and if he's tight on fuel, you ain't gonna save fuel trying to run somebody down from five seconds back. Oh no. I mean, it looks like they're saving right now. To be honest with you, because they were just three and a half seconds behind the leader. And now he is over five seconds, so he's definitely uh, taking it easy. Trying, yeah, he's saving fuel. The the 37 just got around him. Uh, he's he's definitely trying to stay out there. Yeah, and and the only guys that I see that are, that are going to be are reasonably in reach of this strategy is is going to be, of course, Jeremy Morrison. Um, Jeffrey Marvel can possibly get it. Brian Conklin can possibly get it, although it doesn't seem like Brian Conklin's know, laying back too much. Um, but then you start going into the 48 of Tyler Marvel, uh, Brandon Browning in the 5. These guys have, have now been on 20. Uh, this is their 25th lap of the stint here. Uh, I just I don't think that they can make this thing stretch out for another 10 laps. The 9 car right now, he's He's 18 seconds back, but he's almost two seconds a lap faster. There's there's nine to go, so the math equals out. Pretty close. I don't know if he can get there. He's got to get through a lot of traffic. He, he might pull off a top three here. I don't know. That, that's, a, that's a tall order right there for anybody. Even Jimmy Johnson couldn't pull that out of the hat. You see him now. He's 18, 17, 9. Let's just see how much he can cut into this thing each lap. You see he's going to pick up. It's like about four-tenths of a second just through turn one and two. I mean, he is definitely the fastest car. Look at that. He just cut off four-tenths right there through three and four. I mean, that that gap is shrinking, but I just, I'm with you. I just think that that's going to be a little too much. Uh... Having having eight to go here, uh, unless there's a yellow, there's there's no chance. He has one extra set of tires, though, in case a caution does come out. He will still be able to uh, try and fight for a good finish here. Yeah. 75 is coming to the white flag here. Uh, he still has an eight-second lead. Uh, looks like he's going to be able to pull this off if as long as his four tires aren't vibrating or blowing up or... White you know, flag in the air, and he could run out right now and probably win this thing. So, <laughs> looks yeah. like looks like Jeremy Morrison is going to play the strategy. He's going to play the fuel strategy. He's going to drive it down into turn number three through three and four off of four clean. Keep it out of the wall. Don't spin it down the front straight away. It's going to be Jeremy Morrison stealing the checkered flag here at wow. Kansas. What a race. Brian Conklin is going to take second, third, and, and, and probably the most disappointing third you could possibly imagine for Jacob Colt. Fourth is going to be Jeffrey Marble. Fifth, Tyler Marble. Sixth, Brandon Browning. Maybe not. Did he get past? No, that, that seemed like that car was a lap down. Like, uh, yeah, it looks like Brandon Browning is out of fuel, so he stretched it as tight as he could. Looks like seventh is going to be Tanner Kalen, eighth Daniel Bowler, ninth Peyton Johnson, and tenth Deshaun Gorham. As we pull up our results, but it is going to be Jeremy Morrison taking the checkered flag 
here at Kansas in race number two of the iRacing Virtual Cup Series qualifier. And man, what a feeling. As you can tell that he had plenty of fuel in that thing as he is burning it down on the front straightaway of Kansas Speedway. I got to say, that was an impressive run by the guy. I mean, he was so patient. and I know when I'm in the car, I'm not that patient. When I see people pitting, I'm saying, give me some four tires. This guy stuck it out. I mean, he was out there for, for what, eight extra laps or seven extra laps than anybody else. Yeah, and, when, and it, it looked like it ended up playing out for the guy. I'm, 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 I'm happy for the guy. When, when you play a strategy like that, once you commit, you're committed. I mean, that's it. You know, you, you've got to, you've got to stick to it. But it worked out for Jeremy Morrison, and, and we'll go through the results here. Finishing with the win in race number two, Jeremy Morrison, seven point eight seconds back was Brian Conklin, and of course Jacob Culp, who. The story was all night how wow, he dominated he the field third place, though. all the way back up to third, but just ran out of laps. Jeffrey Marble, fourth. Tyler Marble, fifth. A good points day for those two guys who had great days last week with Tyler had the win, of course. Brandon Browning, sixth. Tanner Kalen, first car lap down in seventh. Eighth was Daniel Bowdler, who ran so long in P2. You almost wonder what happened with him. What went wrong? Because remember, he was running in P2, P3 behind Jeremy, I mean, behind uh, Jacob Colt for a lot of the race. Uh, in ninth is Peyton Johnson. Tenth, Deshaun Gorham. We will see if we can get Jeremy Morrison down here into the booth. Jeremy, what a call here with the fuel strategy. You got a copy, buddy? Man, it took some commitment, and we saw it developing, um, but you made it work, and, and the nine was just light years faster than the rest of the field. At what point did you decide this was a strategy you were going to go with? Actually, uh, I was going good. I seen I had fastest lap. I just had a uh, lousy uh, qualifying time. I went for it, and then when I realized after the first round of pit stops that he pitted 10 laps short, I looked at the mileage and Matt did the math and went, I can do this because we I was running 33 or 34. Yeah, and, and we we picked up on it up here in the booth. I was I was looking at, at, at pit stop and, and, and the amount of laps you did on each stint, and, and then I I knew when you pitted there, you were you had ran a 33 lap stint with 33 to go, and I said, "Well, he knows he can go 33 laps." So it was a great call, and it worked out for you. Is you're going to take the checkered flag here in race number two? Uh, do you have anybody you want to shout out? Well, I just like to say thanks to the Canadian guys and I Racing for putting this on, and you guys yourselves for uh, having us uh, join this, and hopefully uh, the whole group can move up to the the pro. Absolutely. You guys are putting on some awesome races for us so far here in the first two weeks, and uh, we hope to, to hopefully put something on similar tomorrow night. Well, Jeremy, once again, congratulations, buddy, and uh, go enjoy celebrating a win. Thank you very much, guys. Talk to you later. All right. Good win, buddy. All right, and uh, finishing P2 was Brian Conklin. I do, oh, there he is, he's in the race room. Let's grab Brian and bring him down here and talk to him real quick. Brian Conklin, this is Justin in the booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I sure do. Hey man, you had a pretty good run. You, you pulled out a second place finish. Uh, Jeremy just had the great strategy call, but uh, what'd you make of tonight's race and uh, overall, how did it go for you? I think the uh, racing was great. Went green flag the whole time. No cautions. Came down to fuel mileage. Um, I don't know how I was able to do that, but made it work out. Yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, you know, we were watching the the 75, and he was, he was. Uh, once we realized he was good to the end, we we kind of watched him, and and and, uh, you know, you hung in there and, and played the same sort of strategy, and and came out with the uh, second place. So. Obviously a great finish. Uh, unfortunately, you missed last week, but you got some drop weeks, so definitely put yourself in a great spot in points. So 
uh, congratulations on second place. And uh, do you have anybody you want to shout out? Uh, I just want to thank uh, this league here for creating this and giving us an opportunity to race. It's been fun. Uh, I wish I didn't miss last week. Um, I also want to thank uh, Team Marble Racing, my teammates Jeff and Tyler, and um, it's just this is going to be a fun season. Absolutely, buddy. Well, congratulations on second place, uh, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Yeah, good run, Brian. All right, I'm going to talk to the guy that that should have, but could have and. Should have, could have, and just didn't. <laughs> Jacob Culp, man, that is probably the most disappointing third place finish you could have possibly had. Talk about the strategy and what you were seeing in the car, and uh, and uh, ultimately it didn't work out. But you came home with a P3, man. Just talk about it. I tell you, the last uh, the last race we ran, I I kind of realized that my strategy was wrong of running my fuel all the way to the end. So this time I was like, well, maybe I'll switch it up and I'll pit a few laps early every time and just be on the good. And then had 10 laps short on that last car on the second pit stop. And I knew I wasn't good. I'd have to pit again. And I realized at that point that I'm pretty sure there were going to be people making it. I was hoping I could catch them and I just didn't have enough time. You were, you were definitely running them down. You picked up quite a few spots flying by guys and, unfortunately just ran out of laps and man you were the fastest car all night long so um you know you didn't get a whole lot of air time because you were so far ahead of everybody so we didn't want to watch you just turn around and do hot laps all night um but uh no man we uh we we definitely enjoyed watching you and 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 what you had going on and then of course jeremy and brian and the strategies they played and made for an interesting race went green the whole way so kudos to you and the rest of the field um you know, as you get ready to head into next week, um, you know, you were fast last week. You were fast this week. I'm sure you expect to be fast next week. What's it going to take for you to push through and get that first uh, uh, checkered flag? Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, I think strategy is it. I think if I can figure out my strategy, I could probably get there. I think the the speed this week honestly surprised me. I did never expect it to have that, that kind of speed, so... It, uh, it felt good to get out there and lead and lead the whole race pretty much. And it just came down to strategy. I got to figure that out. Once I figure that out, I think I can probably pull away a win out of it. Absolutely, Jacob. Well, uh, once again, man, congratulations on third place. Obviously, not quite the night you wanted to have, but, uh, you know, better than most. So hang in there, and uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing you next week at Michigan. You have anybody you want to shout out before we let you go? Nah, I think that's it, man. I appreciate you guys for sure. Good job on the uh, on the stream, and good job on continuing this league going. All right, man. Appreciate it, and uh, have a good one. Thanks. All right, and that's going to wrap up our coverage here of the iRacing Virtual Cup Series Qualifiers, race number two of 23. Jeremy Morrison pulling out the win by 7.8 seconds over Brian Conklin and Jason Jacob Culp, excuse me. And uh, we look forward to trying to continue to bring you guys these races right here on the iRacing Virtual Cup Series Facebook page. Signing off for Oscar Jensen, Dennis Nickel, I'm Justin Bowles, and be sure to tune in to Max Speed TV on YouTube to catch the iRacing Virtual Cup Series race tomorrow night at Kansas Speedway for 150 laps of mile and a half wall riding, low riding, middle riding, and three widen, and all that you could get. We'll see you there. Have a good one.